episode of Speakers of Heidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers, Omage Cat Comet, Erisu Yamakawa, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Aurora Templeton, Psyche, Azuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstar, Lily Black, Bob CC, Mikta Rabentau, Anathus Moonscar, Pamela Isley, Elenreal Maximus, Codrith Novelist, Mira Miri, Celesto Nautrell, Lazy Boy, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Stormarrow, Tex, Kai Lin, Arthur Law, Buried Anderard, Cypup, Spencer Christmas, Celine Deloon, Edwin, Wubster Wolf, Severa, Zirka Barakil, Kazran, Ventos Tia, Ryark Forbear, Late in the House, Tony, Arcadia Lunashine, Framboise Zachero, Bergy, Fudge, Zephiel, Cafe, and Gregorium Cartus. Get early access to audio and video versions of the show, including the post show, by supporting us at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. Is speakers of Welcome to Speakers of Idol, episode uh, 409. I'm Lakeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Georgi Wiston, Mela Vanadar, and Rollo Des. Uh, Hello. 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 Welcome, Hello. everyone. This is uh, a spoiler-free episode uh, of Speakers of Idol, the last one, mind you, before we descend uh, upon our spoiler cast next week. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can, you can watch this even if you haven't finished the MSQ. And, of course, if you have finished the MSQ, you can also watch this. Ep- everyone can watch this episode. It's, it's crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. We are going to talk about Dawn Trail, uh, but mostly stuff surrounding Dawn Trail. So um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll dive into some of the um, technical issues that have occurred uh, since launch. It's been quite a lot of them. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about that and... We're going to talk about the job changes that have been announced uh, on the Lodestone as well. So um, that's uh, what we're going to talk about. Also, we're going to read Mogmail, speakersxv.com slash Mogmail. We are going to read spoiler-free Mogmail today. Um, so uh, that's happening. You can now send in your thoughts on Dawn Trail's MSQ. Anything that contains spoilers right now, it's free to send in to our Mogmail, speakersxiv.com mm-hmm. slash Mogmail. So... We know that there's a lot of a <sighs> um, <laughs> lot of thoughts about the MSQ. Mm. So the word uh, is discourse. Lequeur. Yes, yeah, uh, yes. There's a lot of discourse about Don Trail's MSQ. Uh, so we want to uh, hear your um, your uh, opinions on the MSQ as well. So do that. Send it to speakers.com/slash mogmail. Uh, all right. Uh, let's. Uh, oh yeah, I should also mention that tomorrow. We will return, we will bring back minimum eye level, at least for one... We, I don't know how long we're going to keep doing that, <laughs> but uh, we can't do anything else tomorrow. So we're doing minimum eye level tomorrow. That means that during, yeah. during yeah. the post show, um. we're going to draw a dungeon and spin the wheel. Uh, so minimum eye level tomorrow, any uh, uh, Endwalker dungeons, Endwalker dungeons only. So uh, there you go. All right, uh, enough, uh, enough yapping. Uh, more yapping coming up because it's time for... Recent events. Yes. And uh, we start off with some uh, uh, light news first. The um, Final Fantasy XIV uh, arrangement album, uh, Scions, sorry, <laughs> Scions and Sinners, Final Fantasy XIV arrangement album. That's the right That's order. That's my thing. Yeah, uh, it's now available on all streaming services, so um, you can listen to it on your favorite. Uh, on select streaming. Uh, it's a select, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, you're being select. very generous. Sorry, I was, yes, being, I, I was being very generous. So, what does that mean? Which services? If we're going to say select, uh, we might as well. I mean, it's a big them. list. But okay, I mean, it's so the, I could the have usual, said usual, not. <laughs> it's you know Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube, Deezer, nuts. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Line AWA, which I don't know what is. Mm-hmm. iTunes Store, Amazon Music Store, Mora, 
times three. Uh-huh. And Shitsumoku. I don't know what that is. And Animelo Mix. I don't know what that is. Okay. And I think there's one at the bottom that's cut off because of the privacy reminder on their website. <laughs> okay. So, and, and there you go. Okay, there you go. Those uh, ones. If any of those are your preferred streaming service, congratulations. You can listen to this album now. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's cool. It has the um, it has the arrangements that are performed by the Primals and Ke Keiko. So cool. Mm -hmm. Issues regarding Dawn Trail. Now issues with house housing brightness settings specifically. Um, oh. This is interesting. I did notice it. Um, we'll we'll talk about it after I read uh, read the first part here. Hello everyone, this is Neo Kyoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. We have received numerous reports that the housing system's lighting settings are brighter than usual when set to zero. Conversely, when set to five, the lighting is darker than it should be. <laughs> the team has been hard at work investigating the source of the issue and how to best resolve it. I apologize for taking so long to address the matter, but I would like to take this opportunity to inform you all of our progress. Yeah, I noticed this because our House, our house is usually quite dim because I put lights everywhere, and that was supposed. Mm. That I thought, oh, that look great now with the lighting update. It does look good, but I had to like lower it to zero to bring it back to like the level it was on. But even then, it still looks a little bright. Um, so yeah, that is definitely weird. I wonder why. Have they just mm. made like dark areas brighter in general now that there's no global? lighting maybe i don't know it's strange possibly uh, well he is actually going to talk about it uh maybe uh the effects of updates to lighting uh th thanks to the graphical update in patch 7.0 the game has seen significant improvements to lighting and the number of light sources that can be processed simultaneously while this has resulted in greater graphical fidelity it has also fundamentally changed how lighting is handled compared to patch 6.58 making it impossible to recreate the same visuals when compared pixel by pixel it was our, our goal to match the lighting settings for housing seen in patch 6.58 as closely as possible. However, we've determined a mistake was made when adjusting the parameters required to accomplish this. I will explain the source of this issue down below, but I would like to reassure you that we are doing our utmost to fix the lighting settings to match what was previously available. Because the process involved carefully testing various lighting settings against several combinations of furnishing layouts, we expect a fix for this issue will be ready by patch 7.05. My sincerest apologies for taking so long to resolve this. For those of you who have already finished designing or redesigning your estates and apartments, please bear in mind that you may need to further adjust brightness settings in the near future. Yeah, so don't design your housing with like the current lighting uh, system in mind, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Um... So the issue with changes to lighting. When fine-tuning the lighting settings in, your, in our improved graphical environment, the newly added baked reflections were mistakenly set to on when determining the base lighting level for housing. Ooh. Because of this... So even what are baked reflections? It's reflections that are already been in the rendered. Oven. So they, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're baked. They're not, they're not generated in real time. B yeah, Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. Uh, um, because of this, even with lighting set to zero, there is a persistent lighting effect that makes the environment appear brighter than intended. The highest brightness setting, meanwhile, was adjusted several times while trying to strike a balance between the player's character's personal lighting and that of the surrounding environment. The end result inadvertently made lighting darker than what would be seen in previous patches. To ensure housing remains a place for players to comfortably express their creativity, originality, and sense of style, our plan is to disable the baked reflections and rebalance the environmental lighting to bring these new settings as close to the original values as possible. As mentioned, yeah, that's for Europeans, of course. Of yeah, course. I mean, yeah. what is like, this is the longest post on something that you know is um, it's an issue, but it's not like Europe is a gas at the, at the mm -hmm. lighting levels of housing. Yeah. Uh, they're not even starting their MSQ. They're no, just they're, taking they're, pictures they're, and they're they're housing. shocked. They're sending in p screenshots to their mayor to like. Yeah, no, please. <laughs> I mean, France has already like fallen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's over. Yeah. It's all over. Um, <laughs> as mentioned previously, the lighting cannot be made exactly as it was before. It's also affected by a number of outside factors, including your monitor, its brightness settings, and gamma levels. Even so. We are committed to reconfiguring the brightness settings for housing to more closely resemble their previous appearance. Together with the improved graphics introduced in patch 7.0, we hope to provide you with a more enjoyable housing experience. 
Thank you for your patience and continued support of Final Fantasy XIV. Naoki Yoshida, Final Fantasy XIV producer and director. Wow. No worries, dude. Wow. Well, I mean, yeah, there's not much to say about it. It's just, wow. Yeah, I guess. It, it was a little brighter, Didn't really I guess. Notice, but... <laughs> it was a little brighter. Yeah, it hadn't affected me, personally. <laughs> um, but there you go. At it's least I think seeing it. being sorted, so... Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, moving on, I guess. Uh, we go... We go? We go. The big, the biggest issues it's I think has been uh, occurring for Xbox players specifically, but also some uh, PlayStation players. But mostly Xbox seems to be chugging and struggling uh, with uh, Dawn Trail. Uh, are you happy? Are you happy we added another system, another another console to our, <laughs> our family? Uh, Listen, it's, they're having fun. Leave them alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Naoki Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone who has been playing Dawn Trail since the start of Early Access. However, I would like to offer my sincere apologies regarding the issues that we have identified and listed below. Please let me explain the status uh, of the investigation behind their causes and the, me uh, the measures we plan to take to address them. All right, so this is the big one. Uh, an issue wherein the Xbox version becomes unresponsive when transitioning between areas. We have confirmed an issue in the Xbox version where the game client may become unresponsive when transitioning between locations, such as field areas and cities. Our preliminary investigation suggests that this issue is likely due to a phenomenon known as memory fragmentation. Defrag your hard drive, Xbox players. <laughs> we are currently conducting a comprehensive investigation into the matter, which we have prioritized to ensure a swift resolution. However, rectifying the issue requires the deployment of a patch to update the client. This process involves rigorous checks by our QA team among other procedures, which means it may take several days to address. We are working to expedite the release of this patch at the earliest possible opportunity. However, we regret to say that this process will require some time. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience that this caused, causes and appreciate your patience and understanding as we work to address the issue. The likelihood of encountering memory fragmentation is reduced when playing on worlds with relatively low populations due to their lower chances of encountering large numbers of characters on screen at the same time. <laughs> Until we have resolved the issue, we kindly suggest you consider playing on either the Dynamis, <laughs> Shadow, or the Oceania data centers. Stop oh, bringing up Dynamis. Stop it. <laughs> People aren't going to do that. Mm. Did, so was this the patch that happened earlier today? I understand. I think so, yeah. yeah. Although, okay, so it was the one that interrupted the vast majority of people's like Saturday game ruined, time. <laughs> yes, ruined the first weekend post-launch, yeah, post-official launch for the majority of players. Yeah, for the Xbox players. Yes, well, they wanted to play this weekend too, you know. So yeah. I guess, and that's... they haven't been able to. Some been of them might not have been able to play yeah. all week. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Wilson. Thanks, Wilson. Um. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. So moving on. Uh, that's Xbox. I didn't know. No. I didn't know memory fragmentation was still an issue these days. <laughs> no. Well, it, I it guess is. on Xbox it is. Xbox yeah, it is. Their, their architecture special. Yeah. It, it, it. A patch came out today. It specifically stated that the, an attempt was made to like they have made some uh, fixes to the Xbox client. However, the issue might still persist. So mm -hmm. it, it, there is. They're still checking. So it, it, yeah. It, you might still be chugging along a little bit. They're working on it, though. Um, and the more issues. An issue uh, in the Dragon Songs reprise Ultimate, Minstrel's Ballad, Shinryu's Domain, and Elubrin Regine Savage, where mechanics related to freezing are not functioning correctly. So the same thing we talked about last week, where, remember, uh, um, Amon did the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem bears similarity to the issue involving bosses in Circus Tower Alliance Raid, which has now been resolved. However, in order to guarantee stable and effective solutions, we are planning to implement the fix through a client patch. Uh, that was also done today, I believe. So that mm -hmm. has been sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. That was I think all patch. three of these were done in the patch today. Uh -huh. Yes, I think so, yeah. An issue with the display and animations of certain characters. We have identified an issue that affects aspects of certain playable races during the execution of certain mm -hmm. emotes and the scholar action seraphism. The, the, the cause is a result of incorrect values being input for the corresponding parts during fine-tuning of the graphical update and other fixes. 
Despite our efforts to correct and fine-tune the graphics in the final moments before the release of Dawn Trail, these issues were unfortunately identified late in the process. I'd like to apologize for this. <laughs> I have to say, the Seraphism one is the strangest one, because that's a new... That one, yeah. That's a new ability, and you'd think that they'd yes. do a thorough check on that before I, it was shipped. Yeah. I, also, mm. I, I also haven't seen this error no. either. They don't even. They don't even specify. It's, I, I think what. from what I saw, I forgot which races it was, but when you would try and like, I guess display gear on yourself, like in the try on window, your weapon would like meld into your chest or something. Like it'd be oh, in the wrong position. Oh, That's from what I saw at least. It's, it was something like okay. that. Why but are it, you trying to examine your gear mid seraphism? <laughs> oh, it's know. a very niche case, so yeah. I'm sure that's why. You know, it wasn't a super priority or anything. It's that only available sense. in combat. Yeah. And you only have about twenty seconds of seraphism. You should really be focusing on what your why you've entered this phase to begin no, with. It explains a lot here. of the uh, healers I've had recently in expert roulette. <laughs> hmm. Mm. Uh, the aforementioned issues are being classified as a high priority. They're under investigation on our development server and are being addressed in a systematic manner. We are considering the release of a hotfix, which is likely to occur sometime this week, which would be accompanied by a brief maintenance period. That has they, occurred. They, it occurred on yeah, this Yeah, they day. considered it and went ahead with it. Yes. I would, it did happen. I would like to extend my apologies once again for the, occurrences, uh, the occurrence of these issues. Rest assured, we are committed to addressing issues such as these that occur 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 after the release of an expansion and will continue to promptly correct any urgent issues that may arise neo kiyoshida final fantasy 14 producer and director thanks Shoshipi. yeah um he's not it was done nice to hear from you today it was nice no it was nice to hear from it, you was me, it was nice thank you you've said you've thanks, said so Shoshipi. much already thank you Shoshipi. Yeah. surely there's nothing there's nothing more you'd, you'd have to say uh, oh no. oh uh, i oh, see you should be hi uh, so, uh, because of these uh, issues uh, that we've been having, um, specifically Xbox players, uh, there is now um, he to, uh, was it uh, a couple of days ago? Or was it yesterday? I don't remember when this came out. Uh, sorry, this this post it's very recent. Um, game time is being uh, granted to all players that have an active uh, subscription right now um, bec because of the issues that have plagued the game although i haven't experienced no i'm not no yeah well i think xbox players have had it the worst i've had like graphical glitches and issues there mm. are some things but i'm expecting that we've gone through a big graphical update it'll take some time to like iron out all the kinks here no i yeah like the worst yeah, i haven't I've experienced had. anything yeah you roll out the worst oh, it, the uh, the worst i've had is um some dx11 crashes which i end up fixing by oh. one Oh, disabling yeah. the, the discord overlay <laughs> i forget oh. that's on sometimes and two also updating my graphics driver so I'm, right. Mm. right i'm good now no more no. crashes for me okay i haven't had any issues with crashes or anything affecting gameplay so i guess i've been lucky gameplay has been mm -hmm. good same me. i haven't had any of that but just like the odd visual stuff i've seen but that's it um okay so hello everyone this is naoki yoshida producer and director of final fantasy 14. Thank you all for logging in and, play and playing since the launch of Dawn Trail's early access. On the other hand, I would like to deeply apologize for the serious freezing issues occurring on the Xbox Series XS version when tra transitioning between areas. This will be a top priority fix and is still being addressed by our engineers. We require time for the fix and its validation and ask for your patience until we reach a resolution. During the period immediately following launch, some PlayStation 5 slash PlayStation 4 players were also experiencing inconsistencies in their PlayStation Network play and entitlements and were temporarily unable to log in. However, players have provided great support by using the world visit system and data center travel, which has helped ease congestion and resulted in a very stable overall login slash playing experience. Taking this into account, we would like to grant free game time to the following players. So, Xbox Series X and just players lists everyone's names. Must, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the must, real life address. <laughs> must have registered the full version of Final Fantasy XIV on Xbox Series XS and have an active, active, active subscription as of 5th of July 2024 at 5.30 uh, a.m. GMT, 3.30 p.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Time. 
Game time granted. Eight days for a total of ten days when added to the game time below, which will be That's granted to generous. all eligible players. Yeah. Um, if players are using additional services, such as hiring of additional retainers, a fee usage period for those services will be granted simultaneously. Oh! That's actually... Yeah. I was about to laugh, because I'm like, of course they have to pay for that. No. No, no, no. That's being covered. That's... Okay. Yeah, thank you, Uh Game time will be granted from the 11th of July, 2024, at 5.30 a.m. GMT, uh, 3.30 a.m. East, uh, Australian Eastern Time. Due to the large number of service accounts uh, involved, we expect the process to take two to three days to complete. All <laughs> So you might think, okay, well, Xbox players are getting it. No, no, no. All other players, including those on PlayStation 5 including? and PlayStation 4, uh, you must have a, a registered the full version of Final Fantasy XIV regardless of platform and have an active, active subscription as of the 5th of July, same time. Uh, you get two days uh, granted. Plus... Well. The, it's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've not had many issues. Mm. No. No. Uh, game time will be added from the 11th of July. Once again, I'd like to apologize for the issues that have occurred, and thank you all for your cooperation in easing congestion. We'll be fixing slash addressing the aforementioned issue. Yeah, we've done that already. Thank you, Naoki Yoshida. No worries, Yoshi P. Whew. Yeah. So, um, there's some some weird things about the graphics. Uh, we're gonna move on, but like the graphics. Uh, update. There's a thing that happens in cutscenes where if you play, like the shadows seem to revert to the old system where they get like jaggy and weird. I don't know why. Mm. Oh, that's, um, do you have DLSS on? Yeah. DLSS on? Yeah. Yeah. It's in cutscenes, it's borked right now. But mm -hmm. why? I, oops, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this, I, there's been no mention on it from their side that that's like an issue, but I, it is weird because yeah. you have all these nice shadows. Then you enter a cutscene, and all the, all of a sudden you see all these like jittering shadows everywhere. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 just DLSS. I don't know what they what's going on there, but um, I hope they should mention it sometime soon. I hope. Yeah. Uh, hope yeah. Because so. um, also there's also the the weird thing if you don't use DLSS and you go to and you do the like ninety nine. I don't remember exactly what the um, the AMD's one. Yeah. The yeah. FSR. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you and you lower it from like a hundred to the to UI's resolution, the three D scaling thing, yeah. Yeah, and you get like super it goes sharp. Super sharp. It looks like you're mm. using like a, a reshade filter when you do that. Yeah, it looks a little too sharp for my taste, but it, it's, looks, it is interesting. It is interesting that that because it makes you realize when you have DLSS on how blurry everything looks. But that's just it's supposed how to do that. How smooth and everything. It's supposed looks. to be mm. like that because it's yeah, um, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, it's just uh, another one of those. Graphical things that I think we'll see fixed soon. Um, all right, uh, that's that's all we have for recent events. Um, but mm -hmm. we do have Mogmail, so we're gonna read some Mogmail. Spoiler-free Mogmail. Don't worry, we've uh, made sure mm -hmm. that, that it, there's no spoilers in this. So let's see what we have in the bag. Oh, right. This is from Cafe, from Chaos. Um, hello. Uh, hope everyone is enjoying Dawn Trail. As I've started writing... <laughs> this is very Cafe. As I've started writing this, I was still halfway through MSQ, and I was liking it a lot. Now I've finished the main story, and boy, that was a lot. 10 out of 10. So, while writing this, you were halfway through, and I guess you just <laughs> stopped at some point, and then after the MSQ, you returned to the uh, uh, to write this. I now. gotta start writing the speakers, but not finish it. I'll yeah. come back later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Though my uh, mail today is not about the story nor any theory, it's about the overworld and how it looks. Don't get me wrong, uh, this graphics update is great. Textures, light, shadows, animations, the clutter all around that makes 14 feel more alive than ever, except we barely see small animals and insects around, only the fishes oh. when diving in some waters and the occasional bird flying up high. Sometimes we see tiny rats running in dungeon corridors, but those two are very rare and still inside instances. I noticed it in the second half of Yachtel. We can hear dozens of frogs around us, just out of sight. Maybe they're blue, I thought, but I couldn't find even one. It might be to save on graphic load, but the fact that the animals we see around have been placed there only as overgrown critters to be killed it's fair, I guess, but still, it would be nice to have frogs being part of the scenery, ribbiting beside the ponds, or tiny snails snailing to snurch. 
Now that they've uh, they expanded on how many items they can place around, I think it would be nice to have this additional clutter too, and it would help on making the world feel even more alive. We know that Yoshi P watches Speakers of Heidelin. Hello. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Of so course. I'm, yeah, that's true. Everyone fan. So I'm hoping this little suggestion or reminder reaches them. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Cafe. Yeah, this was... That was interesting. Oh. There is... Um, Cafe, don't laugh at your own mug mail in chat, by the way. <laughs> the, the, um, Just calling them out. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, I heard the frog sounds that you were talking about, and those are actually the exact mm. same frog sounds that are from 1.0 in the, the Shroud dungeon. Right. I recognized it immediately. So that is the Pedro sound, actually. Um, Who's that? But I mean, we saw the f that you see a frog early in the story and never see another one. Yes. Yeah. Look, sometimes there's frogs. I think you got a little sidetracked on frogs here, but I mean, it's a good point. Though. Yeah, like, it is. would be nice to see, like, in the swampy area, so there's like master. flies buzzing around. Yeah. And, like, instead of oh, the only fireflies being the ones you can attack, they're just out there. And birds. You don't really see many birds flying overhead. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be nice. I would love like, it if they had like birds for scale. Like just if when you but when you get close to them, they're still just like low poly <laughs> shitty birds. <laughs> like, yes. They're like at the top of towers and shit. They just look like paper I airplanes. Mean, when you fly to a certain height in some of the Aroma Born zones above the birds that you could only ever see from below, you will see that they are two dimensional objects for the most part. Uh, yeah. Bring it back. Not meant to be observed from all angles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bring back low poly animals. Yeah. I mean, Low having... poly frog right now, please. Yeah. yeah. Like, we had them in... Um... Well, it's unfair. The the one thing 1.0 had was a frog, you know? Like, that was the, the <laughs> set dressing that they had, like an animal. <laughs> other than that, I don't think there were any other... I mean, he didn't do anything. Ornamental... Well, like, he's an ornament, right? He's just... He's yeah, just a decoration. but I think it would want them to be, like, wandering around the world, like, in a weird animation loop or something, like... Well, they can do like Not short just a static frog. Loops. Yeah, they can yeah. Do you that. could even just use like the minions that are animals. And, yeah, uh, I don't know, yeah. litter them in random places, True. which they do sometimes. They they do mm. have like little minions running around, usually near settlements. So yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, that could, that could be a way. I, guess. I mean, that's one of the nice things about Elpis is that there are many just like mobs, like enemy models and minions just running around in some of the settlements of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Zone. yeah. Azim's step had similar with the sheep. There were lots of non targetable sheep around doing stuff. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. true. There are occasionally try, but I do agree. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, we have. Uh, we have. We don't have. We haven't found Pedro yet. The frog uh, is still missing from the game. Pedro, watch. I did feel yeah. th there was hope for a second when I heard that croaking. <laughs> I'm like. They brought him back. They brought. They brought back. I mean, back you the, don't know frog. that he isn't there. That's true. I mean, maybe. I mean, it's, it's, maybe he is there. There isn't. There is an enemy that appears in Cosmo Uka that uses its model, doesn't it? That uses Pedro's model. There's an enemy. There is a. a okay. There is a poison a frog enemy. Yeah, the poison frog. Are they the model? I don't. They're I, not far off. Maybe I thought not. they were just static, like the the frogs in one point were just or they didn't really move. They didn't use like the fancy frog yeah. animations. One, that we have. One, I don't think one point Pedro's model has any bones that can move. So I don't know if they would bone bother. free frog. He's also very okay. small, like he's a tiny little man. So uh, all right, um, I don't know. Uh, I need to I need to look at it again to uh, to determine that. Uh, is it not? Now I want to talk about this frog. Now I want to research this frog. We, we can't do that. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. We have more Mogmail. Uh, next uh, Mogmail coming up. It's from AJ Brainswordson. from Brainswordson. Also from Chaos. Hello, speakers. On a recent episode, you talked about bringing leaves back with a tome reward. I have a hot take for you. Beast tribe slash tribal quest. Well... Uh, uh, societies. This is this is an old Mogma alliance. Way. This is before we learned about <laughs> mm. the new uh, alliance society quests. Um, Omg. Are leaves with a different name and a little story attached to them? Uh, repeatable quests with a daily limit mainly used to level alt jobs, and they even give five cap tomes per quest if you do them on a max level job. At least the battle tribes do. So that's fifteen. Well, I keep saying tribes, but you know what we mean here. So that's 15 <laughs> per day uh, or 105 per week. Sadly, the gatherer and crafter ones do not give scripts, which is very annoying. 
I agree. That is annoying. I love doing uh, society quests. What do we say? What is the shortened term? Do we say it society uh, or allied? I, I, allied quests. Allied I would allied say quests. allied quests. Allied yeah. quests. Okay. But much like the relic, they've rather they've they've been rather butchered on, in recent expansions. There's just one battle. Tro uh, one battle tribe left now, and aside from the tomes, all of them give terrible rewards. Much of the rewards they uh, did give in previous expansions has been stripped out and given to other content, and what's left is unique one-time-only stuff, which limits the appeal of doing them once they're capped. Back in Heavensward, we used to get alliance glam from them, and you could also get relic mats from them. So, speakers, how do you make alliance... <laughs> great again? Lukeel is always saying that well, he forgot to Well, that makes the acronym them. worse. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Shit. Lakeel is always saying that he forgot to cap them. So that what uh, what would make you remember to do them? Perhaps they could give the gear set they stole from us with the hard mode dungeons. Goodness. That Mogmail has not aged well. Uh, and I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. So how do we make um, uh, Alliance uh, societal, Society Quest good again? I think, well, we don't have any battle ones yet. So we have to talk about all the old ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. I think they're fine as is yeah. for the most part. It's just <laughs> I don't have a problem it's, with it, them. It's a, it's a daily that's cute, and there's a little story that progresses over like a month. Yeah, it, it does the job, and it seems fairly not expensive to make. <laughs> so yeah, uh, compared to other stuff, so I think it's it's fine. Right. And a, a lot of the quests are actually pretty engaging, except for some of the ones in Endwalker. I uh, save for like. Omicron They're very and, hit uh, and miss. That's the trouble. You can get like one that's really just a really good all around quest line where you're like, I really like this group of people. I like what they want. And then you get another one where it's like, we're naked and love to race hippos. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's what a like story. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it, it's kind of a shame that the Arcasadara. Uh, the um, the combat tribe, uh, combat society for um, Endwalker, because that means that there'll be far less people that are going to see the Omicron and the Lovric quest lines, which are probably better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't necessarily word. like having like a singular of each type. I mean, I know why they've done it, but I kind of liked the fact that Aroma Born had five, and and maybe mm. maybe four this time round could be fun like two battle ones and then a crafting gathering just to flesh out the I world just... if it doesn't like take too many resources i don't know how necessary a gathering one is because by the time it comes out it doesn't come out until the second patch and i feel like i already have my gatherers capped by then the gathering one is mostly yeah. unnecessary i do agree with you i'm not sure Whereas why it's not rolled into the the crafting one. I mean, I think that yeah, it's yeah. pretty easy like, to excuse like you narratively. Pick between I guess. the two. Mm. And if you want to do two crafting slash gathering, be sure that's fine. I guess, but yeah, yeah, I don't understand the need to split them, especially so. Late. I'd rather multiple battle ones because it's yes. like a third of a level or so if you do your daily on the battle ones at the expansion. So now it might be like a sixth. Uh, sorry, uh, two like two thirds. So yeah. that would be pretty cool. More XP for leveling alt jobs because there are so many of them. Mm -hmm. mm. Whereas it takes no effort to level crafts and gatherers. Yeah, it just takes a you know you just you just spam a whole bunch of collectibles and then you gain like fifteen levels. True. I things I don't even think Aroma Born ones were that good when it came to reward. <laughs> I think they were pretty shit. The only it was really similar. good thing were like the dies, like the the dies yeah. that you couldn't oh, get yeah. elsewhere True. at the time. And that, Outside like, of it, it was just a mount and a minion, like yeah, these ones. Yeah. And it then some of them had a like a, a gear set, like the uh, Kojin. Right. Mm. Yeah. I and mean, but the, they um, you always get like a mount, right some cards, yeah. minions. It seems pretty in line. It'd be nice to get Both. more gear, like cosmetic gear, but it's you know it's not killing me that I'm not. Mm. I also think that just the Realm Reborn. Alliance quests were so much more shit to have to do every day because <laughs> they're the so they, the worst ones. they were so much well the exile oh, were the worst God. but in general they were more involved the like they I feel I feel like they had so many more steps than we do now they were real some, quests yeah. yeah they were long some quests. people might consider it like 
a, a downgrade, but oh, I, I don't want it to be a too. pain to do. Having yeah, to find having a, a Cattle 9 wristband. <laughs> It's like, oh, did I just fucking throw it away? I don't remember. I have yeah. to buy another one. Having, yeah. Having to teleport all over the world so you can use people's specific ovens. Oh, yeah. God. And the fact that you could pick up, like, more than the cap of quests, so you had to make sure you got the correct oh. ones with the right to uh, rewards in XP. Plus, it had a random collectible vendor where you could just hand in a vent, like an item. Yeah. For some reason, yeah, uh, uh, they were so bad. I'm glad I never have to do them again. That is, I that, think that shit sucks. Well, for making the thing is, the oh. thing is, I need to do all three of all four of all five, sorry, of the Realm Reborn ones at least what three times at this point because of they released the new um framers kits for them and I don't have any currency for uh, them. Ah, lucky. Oh. That's one, yeah. That's that's something I like is that they're adding framers kits and stuff for old content. Yeah, that's, that's, um, they're pretty good stuff too. I oh, think no. they should add in um, things that, because like AJ said, things that make you continue doing it. So, uh, the like 3.0, 4.0 lock boxes, maybe like mm. a few days worth of tomes and you could get one box. Or, I don't know, every week you could get enough tokens for uh one of those vouchers for the like the bicolor gem voucher things they could expand mm. that out mm. alternative ways of getting things like that yeah i mean i feel like they've already it I gives mean, you a reason to keep doing them i wasn't aware that the framers kits have been added to the old uh that is recent they've, been, very recent. they've so, been doing well they've been doing it they've been going backwards from endwalker ones. with mm -hmm. each patch since i think 6.5 three maybe oh mm. each patch i think they do the yeah i only have got like a couple because i always forget to check but, well yeah, that is uh, already an incentive being added to do mm -hmm. to do yeah. old ones so but it's a one-off which is the it is one off yeah that's true but something to keep you going back yeah i mean there's some ideas yoshi p do we want to go back to like a realm reborn though like the, the... no it doesn't have to be <laughs> the old ones it can be just to continue doing the because you don't yeah. Once you've done the storyline, most people don't do them again. Mm. Right. That's. But if there was a reason why you could continue doing them to gain from it, people mm. might. Oh, uh, I do remember the days of Storm Sap, though. Fucking. Oh, I was yeah. Grinding that Namazu. So oh, much. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was, that was so easy money. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, like, a, a couple more crafting materials. That's fine. Our gatherers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I like it. You get cool, like get emotes, you get minions, you get mounts, you get songs, you get framers kits. Yeah. One point five times the rewards, remember? Yeah. From yeah. whatever I'm gonna say. Maybe you can look this time around. Yeah. Okay, well there you go. Uh thank you, uh AJ. Uh we'll do uh we'll do more. Uh here's uh mm -hmm. here's another one. Uh, this is from Framboise Zakaro from uh, Mateus hey. Crystal. Hello, hello, speakers. I don't think I've asked you this question before, but I think it'd be a fun thing to hype over. It's inevitable that with demand, we'll be getting more housing wards at some point. But what are your thoughts on a new housing district? Oh. Well, this is Remember, this is before Dawn Trail released this, uh, this question. What would you like to see? I know there's a lot of talk about housing on the moon, but I'm personally more interested in something like Thavnir housing. Imagine the colorful, ni uh, colorful night markets we could have, seeing how Shiragane streets look. Or, if we wanted to go with the current themes of Dawn Trail, a Wild West cowboy-esque town. Oh. Your show is keeping the wait until early access bearable. So there you go. There's the date. Ah. Bearable. Thanks again for all you do and love from Mateus. Um, all right. Uh, Imagine a tumbleweed just going across your front lawn. That'd be great. I mean, yeah. Based on the goblet, I get the impression people don't want to live in deserts. No, that's true. But a new desert, well, that's cooler. They'll, Gobl yeah, Goblet they'll was... want to live in the new one. Goblet Goblet's was just like in the, the weird... dregs of society. <laughs> no, but Goblet was like, oh yeah, we have a desert. You don't get to see it because we've, we've built you up in the like mountain. In the so clouds, you... floating. And it's just roads everywhere. Like you don't... Like a giant mesa or something. Yeah. It's super yeah. weird. Yeah. Goblet's where you get a house if you can't get a house anywhere better. <laughs> it is unfortunately Sadly. for the most part true. Uh uh some people man like i the goblet. that's fine and i, I just want we, we, we all used to live in the goblet i think probably. yeah 
Oh, I started there too. Yeah. Started yeah. from the bottom. See? Not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, but uh no, I, I I would love housing in the Crystarium still. Especially if you do oh, like yeah. all of the kind of mm. the blue crystal stuff. So you, and maybe if you could see the crystal tower in oh. the distance. Mm. That'd be I'd love it so much. Yeah, yeah. Get the purple. Would it have Lakeland grass? Uh, I'd imagine there'd be some at the least. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Uh, and oh, that'd be a fun way of uh, with like breaking up how, like high value and low value plots. If some had the late done grass and yeah. some didn't. No. Uh, also, uh, I haven't been to any of the uh, first uh, areas. Crystaria must look pretty good now because Crystal looks crazy with the new um, graphical update. Like Crystal Tower looks like the, the oh, circus, circus tower looks fantastic looks incredible mm -hmm. now. um so i i was i hoping mean thing it would... meg looks great now as well mm. yeah Ilmeg looks good yeah yeah yeah. i but... i have been to the crystarium but i've just not looked up because <laughs> right. you know mm. all the crystals are on the top yeah and i haven't looked at the crystal towers with the big mm -hmm. so right. i just right i should have but yeah i've i've been there because because that was my complaint back when shadowbringers came out. i was like mm. Yeah, it's cool that it's crystal, but it looks like it's like matte plastic, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, but now I hopefully it looks nice and shiny, like it should should do. Um, yeah, uh, Crystarium, that's a good one. Um, how about they mentioned Thavnir? Would that make? Thavnir sense? would be nice. So, like, you could have the, the big um, the mountain in the background, maybe for that one. The uh, the big what's it giant called? skull thing? Giant skull. Ah. Uh yeah yeah uh, that could be cool and like everything would have like all the streets could have um all the colorful like fabrics hanging around mm, make yeah. it nice and bright yeah um i think you should my uh, make houses in garland mold just so you can have houses that they don't have you can make <laughs> there's like street That's... urchin garlands running around oh, that was like, so good. <laughs> please oh. do not come in for the wolf no <laughs> God. My worry with Thavnir is that I feel like aesthetic, not in terms of like um, building design, but I just feel like environmentally it might end up being too similar to Shiragane. Oh, I don't, I don't think it would. The, mm. I think you could definitely do a lot with the layout and just the, the style of buildings that we'll have will be vastly different That's already. True. That's true. For like the, for like the non-player parts, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's the only thing that I think that would be different though, because I feel like the rest of it, because mostly with um housing districts, it's outside of like the small town areas, which mm. you might not even see that of very often. They look very similar, so yeah. it's only like the massive overarching environment around you mm. that is why you're there a lot of the time. Yeah. Which is why places like um lavender beds and um uh imperium. Uh, special because they're a bit more unique. Yeah. Right. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah they're yeah. like it's not super disconnected. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think they, especially with their, the the graphics capabilities now and the amount of objects they can have and the draw distance, I think they could definitely do something interesting with it. Yeah, I agree. Now that they have more, you know, they've had to the, the all the housing districts that we have so far have had the restrictions from the the old system in place so mm. Mm. they are able to i mean they mentioned more. the moon what if instead of being on the surface of the moon it was like a hollowed out moon cave that we lived in it had all like glowing crystals and shit all over the place Ooh, okay that would be very rather than different. being like just a flat white Ooh, moon okay here's one what if you could have housing in the void as in like your own little void keep thing <laughs> That's, that should be how they deal with um, that sounds like instant like a, housing. Uh, that sounds like a future island sanctuary type thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be better for that, but I I would love to just see a bunch of player housing and like the dark evil looking void with like demon statues yeah, down there. Golbez's road. castle in the background. <laughs> yeah. And then, and just then suddenly, endless purple. And then just like Chocobo house, uh, Paisa <laughs> house, Moogle house. Uh, yeah. Um, the candy one, one that you love. Oh God, I hate that one so much. You don't love have, the candy house. Don't have the candy one. Please. Guys, get the candy house. Don't buy it. Don't. If you live it. near us, get the candy house. Oh God, no, don't. Um. Okay. Yes. So. Um. There you go. 
That's our. Uh... I mean, as there are other options. There are other options, now, but, but we'll talk about that at a later time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, that's that. Let's do. You know what? We'll do one more. Yeah, I'm feeling. Uh, I'm feeling Ellen DeGeneres. Oh. This is from Gelther Rollinson from Halicarnassus. Uh, Ahoy speakers, an update regarding my last mug mail about getting a heretical family member into playing the MMO. Hasn't worked so far. <laughs> oh, yeah, I We're remember still this. trying the social ostracization. Oh, God. Okay. I Sorry. I, oh, I see. I was about to just read that as well. Ostrac. Okay. Tactic. So I'll let you know uh, if it bears fruit. However, today I'm writing to both answer your pleas for more mug mail and to pose an interesting discussion topic. Ever thought about what's beneath the sea of clouds? Not the oh. one surrounding Ishgard that you can fish in. I mean the zone. The loading art for the zone shows there's some flat terrain down there with tall mountains in the distance. Regarding the perpetual cloud cover, which I believe is canonical and not just for gameplay slash performance reasons, I wonder if it's only uh, one-way clouds that are visible from above but from below resembles a light mist like we see around some all, or like what is shown in the Legend of Zelda series as Cloud uh -huh. Barrier. <laughs> I've kind of always wanted to visit Abalathia's spine proper in-game at some point, uh, get some Hellsguard and Warrior lore, uh, maybe revisit Selpathol, too, at some point as well. Uh, any thoughts from you guys on the subject? Want to visit the mountains in an expansion or two? Or are you content to float above them for the foreseeable future? Interesting. Yeah, what is... What lies below the Sea of Clouds? Lots of skyfish. Spine. Yeah, but what... Yeah, we we know that but what is is there anything else down there like is does anyone live there yeah. other than selfathol i mean well, i mean that's it, a dungeon it, we're never going there <laughs> is there anything other than selfathol it sounds like from some of the descriptions for like the items you get or like the fish you gather there there's like an entire ecosystem that exists below there that is just I guess uh, maybe like a sky ocean, you could call it. So I guess mm. just tons of fucking flying uh, fauna and maybe like floating full of flora too. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. The Hellsguard do That'd live be my near... Uh, the Hellsguard do live near a volcano in Abalathia's spine. So yeah, there is Hellsguard lore uh, tied mm -hmm. to Abalathia's spine. That's a shame we never get that. Yeah. I no, I, I mean, don't talk too soon, Mailer. It's, it's ripe for a variant dungeon. <laughs> That's, That's true. true. That's true. It's the only way we get a side law these days. Yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, and we could. Who would we go with? Dalamud Red is the obvious choice, mm. but who else? <laughs> what hell's guards do we? The know? Oh, the warrior. What was the the curious gorge? curious gorge? We could go with him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Why what not? If we didn't do the warrior quest. It'd just be some random dude. That's true, but still. <laughs> I think one of the issues with like a zone like Abalathia's spine and why we've never really visited one like it is because if you look at it based on zone like Zelfatol, if you use that as an example of its terrain, there's no large open spaces that most no. zones need. Like even the most mountainous zone that we've got this expansion with Urkapacha, there are large plains that we can just like mm. traverse. Mm. Yeah, it'd be very corridor like. It'd just be like little ridges and stuff everywhere. Be yeah, not, wouldn't be that interesting. Because yeah. even as is La, which is directly above Abel, which is another zone that's above Abalathia's spine, it feels very um, uh, what's the word? Uh, tight and uh, yeah. What's mm. the fear of tight spaces? Claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as is La has some large portions of Abalathia's spine. As part of it anyway, just as the, some of the terrain. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but the dude... Rambros, he's a Hellscard too. Are you oh, Rambros? That? Yeah, maybe it'll be a Sons yeah. of Saint Koinak ah, exploration. That would be cool. He's, well, he's just like, do you know what? I don't know anything about my history as a Hellscard. Let's go. Because some some people have settled there. Like there are people that live there. Yeah. Right? The, so there's. Uh, it'd be a cool place to explore. Yeah. But like, I th Rogan in general have been shafted so much in so terms of like much. lore. Yeah. Like they don't, you don't really go to any areas super related to them aside from uh, some of the the ones that aren't the Hell's Guard, uh, the other ones. Yes. Um, sea wolves. Sometimes. Sea wolves. Yeah. Sea, sea wolves tech, yeah. I guess. I don't know. They're not even have much we gone of their somewhere stuff. with the sea wolves. Like they're I, from the northern empty, aren't they? North of the northern empty. I mean, kind of like Lenosha, like semi-related, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Partially, so. yeah. yeah. 
I that, that yeah, I would really like to explore Rogan in because it's like it's like the northern sort of like Viking y land and then like this hellish lava scape. They sound cool. They live in pretty rough uh Yeah, they're rough rough boys and girls yeah, and yeah. you know, living life on the edge. Yeah. And yet we go to like we we go fishing with a little elephant man. <laughs> what? Sorry, that what? Was good. Okay, I whatever. See. I can't remember his name. Uh, You're talking about Alo Alo, right? Yeah, Alo Alo. Yeah. Go fishing with that little elephant boy. <laughs> I mean, I liked him, but uh, I it's can, not the same. I can see the um, I can see a variant dungeon at yeah. Abalathia Spine somewhere. Mm. Like, would you be pleased yeah. to get um Abalathia Spine before Gelmora? Gelmora. My hope for Galmora is fading so rapidly that it's so I, funny, isn't it? Yeah, I just now they're don't... just making new shit. So I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, I don't know. I don't care anymore. I just don't think Galmora. I think, and I've said this for a while, they feel as if Galmora, once Palace of the Dead was finished, is done. They've explained Galmora. So wrong. Hey, what would you do, Lukiel, if the next... I'm wrong or they're wrong? Because they I are. think that's what they think. They are they're wrong. Right. Yeah. What if the next variant dungeon you kill? They show some screenshots, and you thought that's ooh, that's some familiar architecture, uh -huh. and then it hits the title, the Muntoy Bean Cellars. <laughs> They've discovered just the depths of the Muntoy Bean well, Cellars, that, and we have to go to explore. Yeah, I would be happy with Muntoy because Muntoy, would... Muntoy has been shafted. Like they've they it's mm, it's been that's cut true. In, yeah. in this game. So. Who knows? Yeah, who knows what's in between the zone divider? Exactly. Now we can finally maybe, find out the depths of the cellars. The beans. There's like the bean, beans. Are the beans have grown. The beans yeah, are the aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> I think the scariest possibility is the West Strat being a variant dungeon. Oh no! It's <laughs> already been a PvP arena. <laughs> I, the other side of that got destroyed. Just a variant dungeon. I oh. Don't even say that. Yoshi P's uh, watching. Don't listen to yeah, him. Yeah, Yoshi P, don't do that. Uh, the Let us explore the West Shroud. Just add South, it in Southern one day Mordona as a and West Shroud. I am so scared. I am worried that they're just one day going to be a variant dungeon, and that means that's the end. The dream is dead forever. There will never be an expansion even... when they unlock. I don't know if we'll ever visit Southern Mordona. I can imagine no, that I can happen either. if. No, because I don't think Southern Mordona is that interesting. But. I mean, it is a whole place that you can see from across, you know, you can see it. Yeah, and that's bec it's because we can see it that I don't think they want to visit it, because, like, it looks boring. <laughs> it, Just the... make an earthquake happen. It'll make it more interesting or something. I feel like this would be, like, a 10.0, like, um, expansion, yeah. where they're like, okay, we're getting near. Yeah, we're, like, free to play by we're them. We're close to the end for the game. Now we're just gonna fill out the world, so you know we get West Shroud, we get Southern the Gelmora Mordona. Twenty Four Man Raid. Gelmora, no, yeah. Uh, I think the zones in Eorzea that we are missing from One would come back. Like, imagine there's a lot of uh, Kurthus that are missing as well. We see like one uh, of yeah. those abandoned it... Garlean bases in the in the distance. Yeah, in yeah. What would have been I just, there's moments. vigils to explore still. There's the there's lost a vigil. Whole vigil missing. 10. I just 0. feel as if at this, I feel as if at this point, the best chance of exploring places we've already been is variant dungeons because it looks like they have absolutely no desire to add zones to areas we've already explored. Yeah, well, they've uh, never that... done it before, but you know, at ten point oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm possible. going off previous, uh, I'm going off past experience. Yeah, yeah, of course. They can always the other two haven't been like super significant though, but the Seldian subterrain one was actually really interesting. Yeah, and I think exploring the other areas in that format would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. Fine with that, but yeah, it might change in the future. Who knows? I mean, I th I think we've already seen some drastic changes with Dontrail in terms of like design philosophy. So I can, mm. I can, you know, who knows what the future may hold? Yeah. I don't actually yeah. think they're going to make an expansion. That's my dream expansion for 10.0, though. But it's yeah. never going to happen. I'm so curious as to what the plot would be. It would just be like... It'll be like Rhapsodies of Vanadil. Like, it'll be like the the swan song of Eorzea or whatever. Like, something... It's the end of the, the game, The ether is thinning in the world all over. The ether's just dissipating yeah. into the atmosphere. And we have to... Everyone just goes, mm. let's, just, let's just have one last big adventure. Yeah before we fade away maybe we have to find out like okay let's not 
fucking theorize about a potential <laughs> 10.0 end of ga uh, game uh, expansion. Um, all right. So what's under uh, Sea of Clouds? Abalathia Spine, Salpathol, Hellsguard. Are we going there? Probably in a variant dungeon. Mm. I don't think we're ever going to go down there. But like I said, maybe 10.0. Maybe they'll add Abalathia mm. Spine. Uh, and uh, and that'll be great. That'll yeah. be great. Come back in nine my... years. Come back in nine <laughs> years. That'll be, yeah. my... that'll be one of my favorite things when they add zones to like categorizations in the teleport list that we already have. So that all of the 10.0 zones will be split between all of the different regions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be fucking confusing if you don't split by expansion. <laughs> and even in 10.0, they'll add in six zones. Yes. Yes. They yes. will never break that habit. Right. Right. Mm. Um, okay. They'd have to make a new UI mailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's Mogmail. Uh, thank you. Uh, g uh, um, g uh, hmm. And it's Gelther. Gelther, thank you. All right. There are some upcoming job adjustments that are causing a little bit of a stir. Uh, so no. uh, our jobs are being adjusted. Yeah, we're no. going to go through that now. Uh, so again, Yoshi P had to uh, enter the. Uh, he had to type up another um, statement for the lodestone. <laughs> he thought you were done hearing from Yoshi P this episode. <laughs> no, he's back. Working in, overtime, making community posts. Yeah. <laughs> in regards to upcoming job adjustments. Hello, everyone. This is Naoki Yoshida, producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV. First, I would like to thank you all for your patience and cooperation in dealing with server congestion during the early access for Dawn Trail. With your support, and this is, this should have been a separate post, but all right. With your support, we were able to reach a record number of concurrent users we've not seen since the release of A Realm Reborn in 2013. Wow. Why aren't you bragging about this more? <laughs> this is crazy. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> well, that's that. I so never, insane. Never thought I'd see that. Uh, Shadowbringers was so big, and I thought nothing will ever top that. But here we are. So those that are complaining, uh, hashtag dead game, you are dead wrong. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know what? It's all thanks to the healer strike. Thank you guys for saying Thanks, healer strike. Yeah. Thanks, girlies. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. It has been a joy to watch you all play, each uh -oh. in your own unique way. <laughs> but we've become aware of several issues that may have proven a hindrance to your overall experience. For that, I sincerely apologize. We're, we've already announced on the Lodestone that a number of these issues are presently under investigation. But rest assured, we will be doing everything in our power to address them as quickly as possible. You can expect a follow-up announcement as soon as fixes are ready for implementation. We've also been poring over your feedback for jobs, as we plan to make several fixes and adjustments to actions in patches 7.01 and 7.05. I would like to take this opportunity to explain some of these changes and our planned schedule moving forward. Okay, so uh, yeah, but well, the first one that we'll have a lot to say about this. So strap in. <laughs> For the planned monk adjustments, uh, oh. while it was our aim to preserve monk's playstyle from the patch 6.x series, several changes to their core abilities, stacks of fury, chief among them, have significantly changed how it feels to play the job. We discovered certain actions had incorrect potencies, as well as an error pertaining to the requirements to apply stacks of fury. We plan to address these issues in patch uh, 7.01, which should result in improved, effective, improved effectiveness of area of uh, effect attacks. This will also necessitate minor adjustments to the job HUD. My apologies again for Monk's inadequate performance, which presently differs from what we previously announced. It's all right. All right. Their inadequate performance remains. They, I think every Monk person's on life support now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the game's over for them. I mean, at least they're addressing that. I literally haven't clicked Monk. I haven't had. I don't have. It's just hand. weird. It's so weird having the con like the game just tells you what combos to do, and I'm like, how do you know? What timer do you have in there that is keeping? Tr I don't trust that. I don't <laughs> trust those timers. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, they're working on that for Monk. Um, Astrologian. We have received considerable feedback concerning Astrologian, specifically the difficulty of play during damaged burst phase, uh, phases, which we plan to address in patch 
zero, 1. Light speed, which is essential in these phases, will have its recast time adjusted and will also be made into a charged action. Oh, ah. that's nice. We're also, that's cool. Yeah, we're also planning to shorten the recast time of their two draw actions and adjust the potency of Macrocosmos. I ask for your patience as we work to implement these changes in a timely fashion. The issue with Macrocosmos is it's not DPS neutral in the same way that Aflatus Misery is. So mm. oh. you, were, you, were, uh, you weren't uh, motivated to use it. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. It, th these are sound like good changes that are needed. I think there's like lots of issues with Australians not being able to hit those DPS windows okay. Uh, correctly. Okay. But we'll see how it goes. Okay. That's neat. Sir. Good. Now this is uh, <clears throat> this is the one that is really uh, interesting. Uh, the mm. planned viper adjustments. Uh, so it's over, guys. It's 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 over. It's over. <laughs> uh, newly released in patch 7.0, we've received feedback pertaining to the busyness of their skill rotation. We're busy for me. <laughs> to that. That's the entire point. It's the it's point. It's too busy for me. <sighs> I can't believe it literally it the buttons light Far up to you, you, yeah. you don't have to think at all. No, but some I, of them uh flank and some are rare. And they have positions. It's so busy. You to have, kill. I don't know how to do this you anymore. You have the fucking north oh star thing. You just use that. <laughs> what, is just, uh, what is it called? I, uh, Northern True North. True North. North. Yeah, the North Star. North. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll explain it once you're done reading it. Okay. I, I don't think it's going to be what people. Uh, it's not going to be that bad from no. what I'm thinking. All right. To that end, we're planning several improvements, including the easing of directional requirements and changes to the effects of several actions. We're aiming to implement these changes in patch 7.05, though we also intend to make some smaller adjustments to the range of certain abilities in patch 7.01. It will take a while longer, but we hope to address player concerns as best we can. Yeah, so I, I, I managed to get it to 100 this week, and I played a lot of it already. So I think what the issue is that they're going to... The first one is going to be... Uh, when you do a double reawaken, which is like you know your fancy blue burst phase thing, if you do it back to back, then if you're in the middle of your combo, like your normal one, two, three, or I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, technically, yeah. <laughs> um, it uh, it's a very very tight window to finish up those uh, that burst phase. So I think they're just going to extend the length of the combo action so you can get back into your combo a lot easier like without having to you know have like two seconds left over or something it's it's really really tight from um what i saw okay and then i think the other thing as far as the positionals i mean there's there's only four positionals i guess technically six but they're two of them are just the same combo ender so whatever mm -hmm. I, I don't I, think any dps uh melee dps at this point has more than four yeah, I think so it's removed most of them. Yeah, I it's mean, still you'll just learn four. them by playing the. Jo it's only been uh, out a week. Yeah, I I you'll, think it'll you'll just get be... to a point where you know them one off by heart. Yeah. I I think it's just going to be a basic like raising of the floor in terms of potency, where like your mid combo skills or even just the the non uh like rear and flank bonus potency will just get raised up a little bit, I guess, to like bring it into variance. I don't think they're going to remove <laughs> the, the one shouldn't. of the few things uh because i mean <clears throat> double weaving that's that that's the job double mm. weaving the job incarnate that is all it has going for it yeah and it's fun but i understand that decent viper players at the moment they were popping the dps chart so at least very high on the dps chart so the job itself must be in a good place yeah i yeah it's just it's, it's, the it's majority of people windows. haven't I haven't quite mm. grasped it yet, but that just comes with time. Yeah. Mm, but I have too... to it today, and uh, to be honest with you, when I press one, <laughs> it doesn't seem logical to me which ones then start lighting up in the full combo. It just decides sometimes it'll be like two, two, yeah. then one it's, again. It, okay, it's sense, the same just, thing uh, as Monk. It's there's like a mysterious timer that yeah, keeps yeah, track of it, it for you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, it, I don't it really know what you're doing, but I'll follow it. <laughs> but it changes the buttons for you. Once you understand that you you just have a a dot combo essentially and a main combo and it weaves in between yeah, that yeah 
that, that's all it is. It's it, it it's looks so more funny. complicated than it actually is. Yeah. The job page makes it look hard. The, yeah. yeah, the job. If you go and look at mm. Viper's non-assignable number of buttons, yeah. My God, <laughs> like, like, people would have like imagine if these were all assigned buttons. Jesus, yeah, there's like it, thirty of them. There's yeah. also no flowchart. Like you know, you can turn on the flowchart for some skills in the in the menu. Yeah, there isn't one. There isn't one. It's just hit hit the buttons and find out. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah as you three have all had a chance to play Viper, how do you feel about it overall as a job? I've not really had enough time with it. I've only I've only just or not to inside playing around with some of the skills but it feels like a standard melee dps to me so far uh, i've had a little i've had more fun with this than i've had with most other melee jobs like comparing it to like monk because it is seeing as they 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 share this like scary hidden timer i enjoy viper more mostly because the the it's just telling me what to do, and I'll be like, oh, yes, master. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just press <laughs> the buttons, and it just works. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. I thought I was just going to be like, all right, it, it's okay. Um, I think it lacks an identity mm. very much. I think the twin blade shit is, like, just not really built into... I mean... You can't really tell which skills make you use your twin blade, and it doesn't really differentiate it. I thought yeah. it was going to be like the, you know, the uh, woke mode or whatever, stance. yeah, uh, or something. Uh, it just it doesn't really matter. Um, the the look of it is pretty generic too, but playing it feels great. I love <laughs> double weaving. I love hitting all the buttons in the fast GCD. That's great. Yeah, it just looks kind of mid. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, I yeah. Agree. How? How does it compare to Ninja, the the job that it shares a gear set with? Hmm. It's nowhere near the same at all. It is no. a totally different. Interesting. It is akin to like a monk. It's a melee uh, monk mixed it's like with dragoon as well, maybe. Like a monk mixed no, with reapers. Oh yeah, true. Actually. Yeah, that's. Well, you I did get the imp I did get the impression it was close to, uh, that it, there were similarities between it and yeah. Reaper. Yeah. But less um, bloated than Reaper, at least yeah. when you unlock it. Mm -hmm. Reaper it has, has a lot of skills, whereas Viper doesn't have that many. It has so little skills. I almost put everything on just two hotbars, by the way, which is like... Yeah. Uh, unlock it, it's like a PvP class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's very few skills. I think it's really easy to fall into like that kind of mindless flow state of like, I'm just pushing the buttons. Not in a bad way, you know? It's mm. fun, yeah. but you're just... You're not really thinking. No, no, mm -hmm. that's true. That's well, probably good though, because then it gives you time to uh, focus on mechanics. If you can play the job perfectly without thinking, then you can do the mechanics oh, yeah. perfectly. True. Wait, actually, if you um, once you get it and how like the combo like combos work, the job gauge is actually pretty useful for just looking at it at a glance for what your next combo is. Mm -hmm. If you don't memorize it, I mean, it flashes it for you, but to look at your hotbar, if you just look at the either you hit the left assign button or the right assign button mm. and then it's you don't even have to look at your hotbar essentially right it's it's pretty Ooh, neat true uh okay well hopefully uh these adjustments will not uh destroy uh the job uh, as a lot of people are a lot of do doomsayers out there are now uh screaming that vipers they were very butchered. upset about this mm. um i don't think they would try and butcher their new job immediately no. no, I I think it's just going to be like I said, some of those minor adjustments for the the burst windows and yeah, just making it a little bit longer. more lenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, then we have uh, black mage adjustments. Uh, <laughs> before <laughs> learning the action umbral soul, black mage has difficulty recovering MP. <laughs> we plan to address this with adjustments in patch seven point zero one, with plans to make further adjustments to action potencies in patch seven point zero five. Tell Mayla. us about this, Mayla, because I thought it was very funny when you explained this. I mean, I'd like to know what their plans are, but basically, because you only gain MP now based on casting spells, so when you go into Blizzard, you then have to cast a second ice spell to uh -huh. regain any MP. So if you're in a fight, and like a trash pack, and the mob dies, and you've just gone into Blizzard with like 200 MP... You just have to wait for it to naturally come back. Mm. So there's lots of times when at low level you can be in a situation where you've just left with no MP. 
you know, accidentally or because or, or mobs have died. Mm -hmm. um, they should just give you a skill like Umbral Soul. That's yeah, like I think Umbral Soul should be just low level. Yeah. yeah, or like just purely mm -hmm. out of combat, you can just mana a uh, mana button. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very strange. It it feels Wait, really so horrible you... to play at low level. Do you not generate MP at all during ice phase? No, it's only based on. So it used well, to be so tick what's based. The point of... What's the point of lucid dreaming? <laughs> yeah. Vestigial, oh yeah, you could just, essentially. Yeah, it, it's just because all casters have to have it. Lucid dreaming has never been relevant for black mage, though. That's no. true. Yeah, we've never needed it. Um, oh, I remember when black mage used to be like a man of people. A battery yeah. shift was so oh. good. I loved that skill that... so much, and it makes me so sad to lose that. You know, utility. Just, just sucking from the black mage teat whenever you. <laughs> yeah, like the, if the healers just come back to life, just chicken them. So, oh, it was so yeah, good. Uh... Yeah. I miss that, mm. but yeah, I, I'll, I'm interested in what they do. I, I think they need to lower Umbral Souls level, or as soon as you go out of combat, you just gain a whole bunch of MP or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's like an easy fix. I think it was I mean, just an oversight, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it wouldn't be that bad for Black Mage only to have a, because there are other jobs that have skills like this that can't be used in combat that will just reset its MP. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just give I it its own version of hide, like ninja. We used, I guess, used to have to use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, that's uh, black mage. You're getting that adjusted, um, and then um, what do you think? There. So, what do you think the adjustment is going to be? For also, MP, for the maybe MP. they could do something a lot like we already have transpose. So maybe. If you transpose to ice when out of combat, it fills your MP. Okay. Yeah. Could be a way of doing it. Yeah. Um. It's... Or yeah, or like when you transpose, you gain maybe a buff that. If I don't know, if you don't get attacked or don't attack something within the next five seconds, it boosts you. like that. Cause, some cause... way of just when when's combat end is gaining MP. Yeah, because there's no way they're gonna just go back and like no they would not how it was no. that would be weird no i mean it works well but yeah you just have to be in combat otherwise you you can't get mp mat they're also saying that they're gonna adjust action potencies in 7.05 which yeah put them up i think yeah, yeah i i Damage feel is like... actually quite low on rankings at the moment i think oh, oh I, it's oh, so really? sad to see yeah. some of those um, oh the fall of the of black logs. mage <laughs> yeah i think we uh, need a bit of a, a damage boost compared to pictomancer too yeah fucking oh, pictomancer yeah. little oh because it's new it's so sad <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we'll yeah i pictomancer. i think it's just growing pains i whenever exactly. an expansion drops i feel like you're essentially beta testing the jobs because yeah. they don't do any like a ptr or anything like like a blizzard does why don't they do a ptr just for like a, a, an arena where you just fight dummies or something and can learn that like just to practice it yeah because then we uh, could give feedback yeah yeah <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, there's also uh, planned tank adjustments. Um, players have cited concerns with holding enmity in battle due to the fact that certain jobs are able to begin encounters with high damaging attacks. An issue compounded by the removal of damage from Dark Knight and Gunbreaker movement mm. abilities. Really? To I've, oh, I noticed this. So that's because I was doing... I went through this expansion as Gunbreaker by mistake in a funny way. Uh -huh. Um... <laughs> And so, in in every single trust dungeon, fucking if Wuklamad is there, yeah. she will rip aggro away, yeah, like <laughs> instantly because uh -huh. she does like some fucking spinny combos that mm. just <laughs> like, yeah. she's like a Beyblade flying through the air, stealing aggro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Viper like rush opener, and I think also Dragoon rush openers do a decent amount, but I've not really had issues pulling aggro back. Yeah, it's it's easy to get back. It's just a shame using like rough. Divide Remember your range but, ability generates loads of enmity for yeah. tanks. But it is but weird to see it. It is weird. I, I know, to, it's but... weird to see the color change briefly to yellow on the on, mm -hmm. the, on the list. It's like wow, that's like old. I haven't seen that in a long time. But yeah. Um, uh, to remedy this, we'll be adding increased enmity effects to tank area of effect attacks as well as their movement abilities in patch 7.0. They're re-adding it for 
for Dark Knight and Gun Ray. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, they're so bad. I hate the dashes. The Gunbreaker say... one is so dainty sounding, like ping, like a little fairy <laughs> flying through the air. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they don't add the damage back, but they add enmity in the same style think... as um, provoke. Yeah, yeah. I think mm, they might. That, yeah. that'd be good. Yeah, it'd be kind of uh, weird to think about like why are you? I guess just dashing someone generates a ton of enemy all of a uh, enmity all of a sudden. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tanks are in a fantastic them. place right now, though. Yeah, I'm loving tanks. Mm. Okay. Um... Plant Samurai and Red Mage adjustments. For Samurai, we'll be reducing the recast timer for... Yurgi? Tendo Setsugeka. And? Tendo Kaishi Setsugeka. For Red Mage, we'll be extending the effect duration of Manification. Now, I can't speak to the Samurai changes at all, but I can speak to the Red Mage changes, considering I it is one of the three jobs that I've been simultaneously leveling through, leveling through via the MSQ. Uh, the issue with modification is that you essentially have to do six skills in a very fast amount of time. Like, mm. the length of the modification buff is essentially the length amount of time you will it will take to play out the six skills you need to use. Mm. Is it not 30 seconds? Like, I think that's no. what most... No, oh, okay. I thought that's what most of the charges were, was... Uh... Six seconds no, long. you'd think that, wouldn't you? You'd think it would be 30 seconds, but it's not. Damn. I'll I'll probably Viper push it up. And Viper is something like that. Yeah, too. it's 15. Ch Chad is crazy. It's 15. I'll push it up. Wow. I'll push it up. Okay. Well, yeah. It's a that very tight 15. window. Yeah. So I don't even know if it needs to be 30, but 20 would be nice. Yeah. yeah. No, no harm in making it have a lot of leeway. No. Hmm. Um, okay, and then there's planned Pictomancer adjustments. <clears throat> um, <laughs> we've discovered an issue wherein players could manually disable the effects of sub a subtractive palette, uh, Ether Hues and Ether Hues 2. This will be addressed in patch uh, 7.01, but we ask that you please refrain from manually mm. removing these status effects when practicing your rotations. My apologies for any confusion this may have caused. Well, what, what do damage do can it. be done by this? We broke the job. Guys, Please do not it's... do it. <laughs> this has been an issue in the past with Astrologian cards, hasn't it? Yes. It's happened very. It's happened with Ninja as well. As well, where it's, I think it was Stormblood. It was better to not do your combo action. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like just fuck, just skip it. Don't do <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Who played uh... Ninja on the team? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, this. But don't worry. So it just resets the proc, so you can just cast another spell instead of the proc one. Yeah, yeah. And that's you, how you it essentially goes. skip the weaker one. But it's like a one percent gain, if yeah. even that, from what people have said. So it also a lot of <laughs> like very finicky to then have to like re remove it every time as well. That yeah, and I, I mean like Pictomancer's already blowing shit out of the water anyway, yeah. so yes. <laughs> that one extra percent it's like, I can see why they're waiting until 7.1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which of you have... Doing too much damage. Of you, of those of you that have played Pictomancer, how do you feel about this job? I think it's I'm fun. It yet. is but probably one of the most unique jobs in Final Fantasy XIV. Absolutely. Like, oh yeah, There's sure. nothing like it. It no. is super fucking cool. Yeah. I, it's oh. it's fun. Um, it's I mean I've only played with uh, the only times I've played it is with you guys when we did Fates. So I haven't really had like a full mm. like dungeon experience with it yet. So you know it's fun. It's very yeah. unique. I I think it's probably the caster job that I like the most now. Um, yeah. from, mm -hmm. I I feel like <clears throat> this is this is just. An idea. It's not true at all, but I will I will pretend it is in my head for my head canon. I think Yoshi P was like, I don't like Black Mage anymore. I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done playing with you. Nerf that shit into the ground. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm a Picto main guy now. Yeah. So from now on, true. those Picto buffs you'll see. Just, yeah. just keep it in mind. Yeah, that's why you made plays every now. single fight in this entire expansion pack have five hundred abilities that require you to move. <laughs> that yeah. my mages can barely keep up with. Yeah, and who has a ton of fucking yeah, yeah. 
exactly. six seconds worth of fucking movement, like yeah. very frequently. Oh, yeah. it's so common. Pulling I can't wait till next week to talk about it. But oh my god, it's been wild. Yeah. It's his favorite job for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Also, I have to say that's just free. I yeah. have done content with Pictomancers. I've done some dungeons with Pictomancers. And there are mm. some Pictomancers that seem to just, like, start by placing... The, they walk around a little bit, and then they place that, you know, that buff thing... You've got to do it ...in the wrong fucking place, like, far away from mm. everyone. Because I guess they're used to being it's black mages. It's my buff! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> None exactly. of you can I think share. those are does, former does black mages. Does it buff mages. you if you're in it? Yeah, no, it, it, it buffs the party. It gives you damage up. If you stand oh, up. Yeah, 5% I, I, damage buff or something for everyone in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, th I thought it was not, just like a... Do you not need to stand in it? Is it? I, you have to stand in it, yeah. I, I don't. Think so. no, I've I mean, only I have not played Pictomancer as a as a on, during Fates, so I don't I don't know nothing about nobody. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's everyone gets it when it's dropped, or do you not have to stand in it? Okay, so you get it outside of the green circle. Okay. Oh, only the why would they make yeah. that? Okay, there you go. Only the Picto needs to stand. Oh, well, because no, only the Pictomancer has to stand in okay. it, so that's to, it's to indicate where the Pictomancer. Is restricted. Okay. Oh, I would personally change that I to was, make it so you have to be I in was, it to get the buff. I was wondering though because when the when you get the buff, there's a it ticks down. There's a there's a literally yeah. seconds ticking. I'm like, okay, why would I need to stand in the circle then? Because it's will it tick yeah. down? Do you just get it? So now it makes sense in my mind now. Thank you. Now yeah. I know. Oh, uh, you know what? Okay, this reminds me. The idea of standing in the Pictomancer buff circle. I used to know someone who swore ley lines increase their own cast speed if it was someone else's <laughs> ley lines. Oh, no. And so they would, and up until like, I think Shadowbringers, they were doing this, they would always run into people's It's true, lines. dude. It's true. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and they would constantly drop AoEs off. <laughs> Rono, my recast time, my GCD went down to 0 0.5 seconds when yeah, I was yeah, in Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. it's, I, I kept telling not how it fucking works, but they kept doing it. God. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, Pictomancer uh, reigns supreme uh, currently. It so. seems so, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll have to level it. If yeah, it's, it's, it's like fun. some sort of intensely OP job. Although, mm, it's probably, if yeah. you end up in a level 50 or below dungeon, it is not that fun. To play Pictomancer. Sure, you, but that's the vast that's majority job. of yeah. but it's like, yeah. It feels extra bad because you can't really paint anything. Like you, you, oh, okay. you're. Well, that's yeah. I think the bad. only you job that the... feels like over, like very strong, still in level fifty content from my recent experience is Sage. It I has think a, it's a lot feels... of utility. Mm. Dancer feels fine at fifty. I think. Yeah, mm. Dancer. Yeah, that, I think. Yeah, I think I was leveling that as well, and that was all right. But yeah, it's weird that the newer ones do feel quite gutted at fifty. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, anyway, so that was the plan. Picked man's for adjustments. Then he says this covers all of the core issues and adjustments that can be discussed at present. Bear in mind, of course, this does not entail everything we have planned, and we will continue collecting feedback after the release of patches seven point zero one and seven point zero five as we consider further changes. In the meantime, I hope you continue to enjoy your adventures in Final Fantasy XIV. Neo Kiyoshida. He... Oh, yeah. Well, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't. So okay. Try and say that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I feel like... Yeah, he did mention... Like, White Mage is fine uh, currently. I think it's... I think he's... Yeah. yeah, I mean... I don't know if it's... Well... Right, so... Mm -hmm. Healers, not okay. just healers, but it's very seems we to be a lot of healers. Minutes, so you, I guess you can you can <laughs> get on your soapbox. Get on your soapbox for healers. The new, I'm not gonna talk about them in any depth, but the new dungeons in Dawn Trail, and especially the expert roulette dungeons, are immaculately tuned. Some of the most fun content I've done in years in terms oh, yeah. of like boss mechanics and how hard things hit. Brilliant. Please keep this up. But yeah. you will also get one shot very regularly. And when the healer dies, it's the most noticeable. So I'm being a little harsh to healers. But when the healer dies, the DPS will eventually start dying. But the tank will not. The <laughs> tank will solo the whole bus because the tank <laughs> is uh, fantastic. Uh -huh. uh 
and this could be seen as an issue, and I, I don't want them to adjust it, but it's something that has, you know, I've noticed a lot recently. Listen, I will say it's almost rude if if everyone dies, right? <laughs> Save for the tank. <laughs> Fucking funny. And they keep going, and yeah. it's at like seventy-five percent. No, like, that's rude. Okay. Twenty percent or below, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, that okay, yes. that's fine. But like, if we're at fifty, yeah. forty, like it's just I. <laughs> I but got they shit can to do, man. Do it. So that's the <laughs> yeah. sad part. They can do it. Yeah. Like, you can, and that's cool. There are moments where you can clutch it out and it will be cool. Not at 80%. No. Just no. die. No. Please, especially because people, most people are new to this. You know, it's just come out. So a lot of people are still learning the mechanics. So at this point, yeah. be courteous. Like, I've, you know, I've decided to die at like 50% because I don't really have interest in soloing it either. No. <laughs> yeah, like no. so when it's low, just just finish it up. Yeah. Think about it from the other perspective for like a moment. Do you really just want to watch a guy do very, very slow DPS to like the <laughs> last boss for easily five <laughs> to like 10 minutes? Yeah, Come yeah, on. yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But if they die, to, you know, if, if they if they die on the, you know, you've done three pulls and they keep dying, go yes. for it. Just fucking go for it, because, you know, they're never going to learn. Just keep pulling. I do keep have killing. to say, though, because I, I, I played through as a healer, uh, I feel like it has been pretty healer heavy. Uh, very healer heavy. Mm. Oh, very have you noticed heavy. in dungeons, a lot of uh, trash will do constant AOEs. Yeah. Well. Yes, they have it's, tank I busters. like that. Trash like, has tank busters now. Yeah, like, I, I noticed it um, by, like, the third dungeon. I'm like... Why am I losing so much health? What yeah. the fuck's happening? Which I thought I was like standing in AoEs for a moment. It's like, no, they're just hitting everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love it. So it, how was that really uh, made it healer strike going? Because mm. <laughs> even like doing all of the leveling dungeons with trusts as a healer, I can feel it when Wuklamont's tanking and like, ooh, this is a little <laughs> bit. Because I always force the, the trust to do two pulls because I'm not waiting for them. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. With, like, we were talking about some of the adjustments to actions. And, like, when I chuck out Guardian, I, yeah. I'm not taking any damage for a while. So, it, it, right. you know. Guardian's you great. Guardian's yeah. fucking excellent. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really, really looking forward to Savage. I oh, really oh. hope it'll be good this time. It's got to be good. These I, fights I'm... are so good so far. I'm so excited to see how they like play these mechanics up in savages mm -hmm. and extremes. Like, yeah, for so, for some of the other fights that don't have extremes yet, like it's, ah, uh, yeah, because because these I love it. These fights are all these are all made by the new people, right? Isn't that what the they new said? people know how to make a good fight? Yeah, I mean, if this is what they're pumping well, out, well, these is are a the same. Start. Remember, these are the same people that were making um uh the fights like um uh the myths of the realm. So they right. had time that was their like first to... like foray into. They were yes. they were all right, but I think. But now the twenty four the... man raids are a little remember, more formulaic than a four man. Needs remember to what Yoshi P said before uh, Dawn Trail. He said, "Don't be a fail of, afraid of failure or whatever." So they're mm -hmm. they're trying yeah. uh, new yeah. things. Yeah, this, this time. is you've really hit a nail on the head for these ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, these yeah. don't like get boring and samey like throughout the rest of the patch cycle. Yeah. Like the one of the extre not the extreme, sorry, one of the expert dungeons I ran, we died almost twelve times in total to uh, throw up with all the bosses all together. All right, because we're all new. Really? And we're like, yeah, it's it's tough. That shit hits. Yeah, it hits hard. A, yeah. And there's a lot going on, especially yeah, if you're they're like, really complex fights. If you're just expecting like, I'm very oh, excited it's an expert, now. I can just you know fucking uh, do with my eyes closed. You cannot right now, at least. Good. Yeah, you this will I want to be taken back to the era of, like, when Pharah Sirius was a very difficult dungeon. Yeah. yeah. It's like that right now. I don't, I'll imagine it'll get, like, substantially easier with once the gearing starts coming in. But I still mm -hmm. think there's just so much shit going on in these, these like, dungeon bosses that yeah. it, it'll still be um, yeah. kind of a toughie. You can't mess up too much, even if we're, you know, if, you know once the... What will the new tome give be? Like seven thirty, I guess, or something like that. Seven. Well, it's. Oh, I don't isn't know. Is it seven hundred currently? The the tome gear. Does it go up by thirty? Oh yeah, the... it'd be seven twenty then. When it's seven twenty. Yeah. So, 
I don't think it'll be a significant. I think you still have to focus. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. The term gear will be seven twenty, and with the upgrade token, it'll be seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, don't be cowards. Stick to your guns on this one. Don't listen to those players. Please, okay. Yeah, please. No. I. They. They will get better. I yeah. promise you. They can do will everything they? with trust too. So yeah. they can. They can. Yeah. Take the time to get no, better, at least. Not the expert roulette, ro well, they, they're well, not allowed tones. It says the, the, expert. Um, you have to be yeah, an expert, yeah, no. actually, to do those roulettes. Yeah, you know. Been playing this game for ten years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please, <laughs> please give us something. Thank you for finally treating me like someone. I haven't. I haven't played it. An Mela has told me to not play them until we can do them on stream. So I'll do them on oh, Monday. Do, oh, that'd so, be fun. Yeah. Oh, you guys are doing them on Monday. Oh, that's yeah. exciting. I'll watch yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, there we go. That is uh, that's uh, that's all. Uh, that's all we have. Um, that's all we have. That's the show, <laughs> as they say. Re uh, next week is going to be exceptional. So make sure you tune <laughs> next in. week. Yeah, that's big. Uh, big episode next week. We can We're finally talk about stuff. Our first. Um, I guess it is spoiler cast, yeah. I guess we are doing yeah. the spoiler cast on next Saturday. Uh, so we'll talk. That'll be an XX, XXL episode. XXL. <laughs> it'll be, oh my uh, god! It'll no <laughs> post show next long. week. Um, so we'll be um, uh, going through the. I guess the MSQ, and uh, we can talk about whatever we want. That also means yeah. after the episode ends, the spoiler ban lifts. Uh, yeah. on our discord and so, all of our other channels and so, streams yeah so you can talk freely after that but until then the spoiler ban is still in place okay so uh Respect hang in there it. hang in there yeah we did a poll on um friday and 50 percent of our viewers had not yet done the msq on friday so mm -hmm. finish the MSQ. i mean it's, finish, a, yeah. the MSQ. it's a lot to do i don't blame mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. yeah yeah Okay, well, that's it for, for today, folks. We'll be back same time, same place. Uh, what? We'll be back next week. Same time, same place. Remember to follow on Twitter at speakersxiv, twitch.tv slash speakersxiv, exclamation Discord in chat if you want to join our Discord server. If you're watching on demand, links in the description. Um, and if you're watching live, remember to watch the post show, which is coming up right now, and we'll be uh, reading questions from the syndicate. And, yes, chapter two. Of oh, the Titanic finally. fan fiction. Mm. We'll see you there. Uh, send us Mogmail. Speak to the slash Mogmail as well with your thoughts about the uh, MSQ and the expansion and everything. See you in a week. Bye. 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 Bye.